In the afternoon session, um, we have uh, Iskanda, Iskanda today with us, who will share with us about uh, image recognition. So let's give him a big round of applause. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Iskander. It's nice to be here in Hong Kong. This is also my first time in Hong Kong. So I'm very much like, excited with it. And currently, I'm a software engineer working for HDE in Japan. And the en this entire conference uh, for myself, it's entirely sponsored by my company. So thanks to HDE, I'm here. And today, I want to talk about anim anime character image recognition with transfer learning. And this is like my site, like my hobby. So it's not related to my job at all. So yeah, to start with, does anyone here know what anime is? Do I need to explain what anime is? No? <laughs> okay. Uh, this is my, okay, there's some delay to the cast. Uh, my, this is my GitHub account. You can check my project at github.com, Freedom of Kema, and my, blo my blog in my website, freedomofkema.com. And this is, uh, my third PyCon for this year. So this year I've been to PyCon Malaysia, PyCon Japan, and this time PyCon Hong Kong. So it's, it's very exciting for me. Okay, so let's start with talking about the image recognition in real life. Uh, does had anyone here are actually working with image recognition? Anyone? Okay, so there's several people who are working with image recognition so far. Uh, image recognition has become like uh, more important recently, especially with, for example, self-driving car from Tesla, for example, or smart home. You know, you can just go to the home and let the door unlock itself by using your face. And there's also from Microsoft, they try to introduce what they call a smart workplace, where they use a lot of camera in the working place and they try to detect where is the inventory where is the people and they can know, for example, we are searching for like a screwdriver, screwdriver is in this room based on the camera detection. And in Apple, they use it for face ID. So if you use iPhone, you probably already know about this feature. And the next one is about uh, ILSPRC. It's one of the largest uh, computer vision competition. Probably some of you have ever heard of it. So, the interesting part here is starting from 2015, deep learning has actually uh, achieved a better top five error score compared to human. So around 2015, they tried to compare the performance of human, they tried to categorize each uh, object into a certain category, and they compared it to a deep learning uh, algorithm at the time, and at the time, deep learning algorithm has surpassed the, the accuracy of human in classifying objects. So the interesting part about image recognition, it has a lot of challenges, you know, from the object scale, from, from an image, you don't know whether an uh, object is small or large, you don't know how many instances are inside the image, you don't know whether the image can have a deformability, for example, in a rubber, you can just like scratch it and it will be like deformed and you don't know about the color or shape or lighting and stuff. So there's a lot of issues related to image recognition. The background of my project, yeah, one day in one nice day I took a shower and I just thinking like, why uh, there's no like image recognition for anime character, even if there's one, it's usually an exact uh, fit. For example, one to one fit, uh, for example, if you upload the entire original image to what you call a saucenow.com, they can give you the source, like this image comes from Pixiv, this image comes from uh, Danboru or other platforms. But the problem is once you crop the image or you edited the image, the image is not in the original condition, you cannot uh, trace back where is the original source of this image, right? So you need a way to know like which character is actually this uh, image contains. So you have problem with crop image, you have problem with edited image, and you also have problem with index image. And I believe everyone here are already understand what machine learning is, so I will not introduce the basics of machine learning, such as like neural network and stuff. So let's go deeper. 
Okay, so of course everyone here are probably already know that traditional machine learning, uh, if you increase the number of uh, iterations, at some point the traditional machine learning will be stagnated. It will not improve, it will not uh, give you any performance boost. So the alternative proposal here is we are using more hidden layers as what you know as a deep learning. But the thing is with deep learning, first it's slow, and the second you probably need a lot of data, otherwise your model will not work that good. Uh, basic introduction to deep learning, there's a, what we call a convolution, where you have a filter matrices, where you try to multiply, for example, uh, we want to detect a curve inside the image, so you have a filter, you try to convolve the image from like three, three times three matrices and multiply it and get the result and you know like this is the low level feature, this is a line. If you see it in the bigger perspective, uh, you can get something like this. So from an image, you try to extract the low level feature such as a line and stuff. You, after that, you try to go mid level, high level. So you know this is a wheel, this is the uh, window. And you finally, after you have a trainable classifier, you know that the, oh, this image is actually a car. So let's start with the first step. The first step is preparation. We need to prepare the environment and we also need to prepare the data before we start working, right? So I'm using TensorFlow here. If you are using Python, it's very easy to start. Use PIP3 for Python 3, install TensorFlow, or you have GPU in your PC, you can install the TensorFlow with GPU support. And why should we use transfer learning? So from anime, for the anime problems here, image anime character recognition problem here, I tried to check like several websites and so for example like Danboru if you know or Pixiv. So there are like around 35k registered characters but the problem here are the data is not that many. For example for top 1000 characters they only have like 70 images per character. For the top 2000 characters they only have 40 images per character. So our data set is small. For example in Google Inception version 3, if you know about Google Inception version 3, they are having more than 1,000 images per category, which is easy, easier to them for uh, make a machine learning model. So with transfer learning here, we don't need to retrain the low level feature. So before I explained that you need to detect the low level features such as a curve, such as a line before you can know the high level features such as uh, eyes like or wheels from the car. and. For this uh, experiment, I tried 100 categories or 100 characters, and for each category, I use like around 60 images. Does anyone here ever heard about uh, Google dataset, dataset search? Yeah, so Google introduced this dataset search around September this year. So if you are working with machine learning, I recommend you to use this feature because they provide for example, I try to search like anime character, and they gave me a data set from Danboru, which is named, uh, from Kaggle. So from Google data set search, you can try to find a lot of uh, like useful data set that might help you in making your machine learning model. So we, we already have the environment, TensorFlow. We already have our data set. The next step is we want to analyze the problem, right? So for human face, for example, you have a human face here. For the first step is you try to detect where is the human face located, right? After that, you try to transform the human face, the one that you already detected. You need to adjust, for example, it might be title or it might be like you are looking to the side way. So you need to try to adjust it uh, to the same region before we try to pass it to the deep neural network and we can do various things such as clustering, uh, similarity detection, or classification. So to do this, I'm using something what I call a fast detect here. So it's a cascade classifier and pass the hard cascade uh, model and I try to detect the face. And the result is satisfying. It can detect all of the face in this photo. But the problem is with using the same model, it doesn't work with anime character face. It detects only like one face in the middle and it detects nothing else. So 
the conclusion that I get from the experiment is 2D is not equal to 3D face. For example, in 2D anime character face, there's no nose, right? And usually the eyes are big, so they have different features. In human face, you can see human face has like 67 points of facial features. So what the, the machine learning model will learn is actually like the distance from like one point to the other point, and you have a lot of points, and they can know, okay, so this is your face, and this is another person's face. So they can differentiate between faces from these features. So what we want to do here is we want to train a new model so it can detect a face properly. Fortunately, someone in the internet, they already have created a good project for this. It's from Nagadomi. If anyone knows about this guy, it's an awesome, awesome project. Uh, he's also created what you call a super resolution for image. Uh, how do you say? Like you can zoom into the image without. Uh, yeah, it basically a lot of nice stuff from this guy. And from for for, for the face detection, you we can just also use the same thing. We pass the model, and now we <laughs> detect the face again. So now, after. You are using the correct way of uh, detecting anime character face. You can see that a lot of faces are already detected properly. So half of the problem are solved. And if you run it through the same mo uh, with the same model to the human face, it detects nothing as what we expected. So the first step from the face recognition, we already can recognize the face, and we also know that full layer deep learning is probably impossible for us because it requires a huge number of data sets which is impossible for anime characters because it depends on human illustrations. So we need to do something else with transfer learning. So the step three is we want to train and validate what our model. This is how the Google Inception version three looks like. It looks very complicated, but usually with transfer learning, you only need to no, about the classifier part, the several uh, layer near the right side. You don't really need to know how it detects the edge or the shade or the high level features unless you want to go deeper. So the initial idea is you have a face, uh, like, an, uh, sorry, you have an image. After that, you try to use the LBPK scale to detect the face. After that, you need to reposition the image and resize it to a certain value before passing it to the entire deep learning uh, model so you can now get a new model from the transfer learning. So the transfer learning, you only need to retrain these three layers basically. You only need to retrain the dropout layer, the fully connected layer, and the softmax layer. The dropout layer is basically to prevent overfitting, and the fully connected is where you try to multiply each uh, every node in each layer to the next preceding layer. And softmax error is where you try to make the entire classification have the sum of one. For example, if you have two classes and classes A have the value of 0 0.95, it means the class B has a value of 0 0.05. With TensorFlow, we can build the retrainer, basically build TensorFlow retrain and execute the retrainer to the, your image directory. And you can also specify the hyperparameters such as the learning rate, the number of iterations, or the distortion factors. So. If you are working with machine learning, you probably already know about these types of head edge, like working with classifiers, just phew, like very confusing, and a lot of stuff might go wrong here. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, about the hyperparameter, we can do a lot of things from the original image. For example, you can, uh, let's say, change the, the brightness, you can uh, make crop it, the image before resize it, or you can uh, distort the image so it has more variations in the data before you learn the entire things. So this is the comparison. Uh, this is actually taken from the original ImageNet, the, the comparison between accuracy and the data size. As you can see, when you try to increase the number of training images, uh, it will increase, but at a certain point, like around 100 or 200 images, it starts to get stagnated where it doesn't increase that much again. So at that point, you know, probably adding more data doesn't help you that much. You need to do something else to get better performance for your model. So after we re retrain the model, we, I want to verify whether these things work properly or not, right? So I uh, prepared a simple website uh, built with Scenic. If you know, it's a flux like Python 3.5 web server for uh, built with Async.io. 
and while training the models, I don't use my own PC because I my PC doesn't really have uh, enough power for that. So I just found an instance in AWS, a G two two X large instance. If you are using AWS, it has like around six. I think it's eight gigabytes of GPU or sixteen. I forgot. And after that, after you create the model, you can just pass the model to smaller instance to serve it as a web server. So what this website does is basically it runs a face detection with the OpenCV. It tries to resize the image, uh, try to reposition it to a certain position, proportion before it uh, it runs the classification with the TensorFlow model that we built before in the larger instance. It's very basic, the code. This is the web app code. It just like initialize, get the model, get the label, load it to your app, start your app, and it's ready. Oh. Okay. So to classify the resize, the resize phase, you yeah, you can just load the entire TensorFlow things. And when I uploaded an image. Uh, this is what it does in the background. It knows I, it has like a certain hex and width. It tries to uh, resize it first, and after that, it runs a classification and it gives me the result back. Like this character has a name of Hedesarize with probability 0 0.89, and the other top three probabilities shown are shown there. So let's do a simple demo for it. Wait. Yeah, I don't know whether you guys know about these characters or not, so probably I need to explain it a bit. Is the order the rapid? Sorry? Is the order a rapid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but okay, wait a minute. I love that. This is like our actual several characters mixed together, so... Okay, we have a delay here, like five second delay. Okay, so yeah, for example, you uploaded an image with four character faces there, it can detect like, okay, this face, there are four faces and this characters has the top three probability is this, the another three is are this. So if anyone knows the character, you probably can confirm whether it's actually true or not about the results. Yeah, by the way, everything is actually correct. So if you want to confirm by yourself, you can do that. <laughs> or for example, other example is I've uploaded an image which are not a anime, I mean not a 2D image, but it's a, a photo actually. So wait a minute, there's a delay. If you know about these characters, yeah, this is a photo from a figure, and you can also upload it. It can detect the face, and it can also know okay, the red hair is from the blue hair is from. Okay, who is from anyway? <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, let's go back to the presentation. Yeah, it can also detect from photo that I took by myself, it's now this character name is Chino. And now talking about the problems. So after we are doing several experiments, you know that at some point it has a problem, right? For example, when the face is not properly aligned, you cannot detect the face and you cannot uh, know which character is this. So yeah, that's one of the challenges of doing image recognition because not all of the data set are like what you want to behave. Sometimes it have a rotation or axis problem and stuff. But before I talking much about the problem and how to handle those things, I will talk about other project alter alternatives that, that are doing the similar things. Uh, there's a project called Illustrations to Fact, which tries to extract a semantic feature factors for anime characters. So if you are interested in doing these kinds of work, you can check out this project. It, for example, when you upload an image, it can detect the character. It can also detect the general features, such as the hair color, eye color, and so on. And if you know about Chainer, uh, there's a nice guide provided by Chainer in their documentations. So in the in the chainer is some, something similar with basically like a TensorFlow and stuff. So and they provide you a very nice uh, explanation of about how you prepare the data set. You try to clean up your data set first, and 
you can do like various things there and yeah it's it's it's, it's a good tutorial if you want to try to take a deep dive into these kind of projects And at the end of the day, because I'm not an expert in deep learning or machine learning, I want to try to compare the performance of my model to several platforms as a service. Some of you guys are probably already know yeah, about this uh, platform for, such as Clarify, Azure Custom Vision, or Google Cloud Auto Machine Learning. And first, I tried with Amazon. I tried to upload a face image. And of course, it cannot detect a face because it's not a human face, right? as the one that we tried before in the beginning. So this doesn't work. Amazon recognition doesn't work. So I, I continue trying with what we uh, clarify. Clarify, clarify. Uh, so I already clean the data and prepare the data set and already detect the face. And I, after that, I pass it to the clarify to, re, to learn and create the model. Because if you just pass the entire image to these kinds of platform, they probably will not work well because they don't know which feature they need to learn, right? So you need to clean up your data first before you use these kinds of services. And Clarify also has a nice Python API. In case you don't want to build your model by yourself, you can use try to use it. And you can also try to use the Google Cloud Auto Machine Learning. They also have the similar things with Clarify and good Python API documentation too. So finally, we come to the quick comparisons between the services. I try to compare the top one accuracy. So I have a training data set and the validation data set I already separated it in the beginning. And after that, I tried to check each of them through all, all of the services. Apparently, clarify so far for my problem, it has the best uh, performance, followed by Google Cloud Auto Machine Learning followed by the model I created by myself and find at the bottom one is Azure Custom Vision. I don't know why it doesn't work that well. Like it's kind of far away from the others, but anyway, Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, if there's a Microsoft guy yeah, here, I'm not saying Microsoft is bad, but for my problem, it doesn't work that well, okay? So this is how Clarify UI looks like. When you try to upload an uh, image, it can know, oh, this is an, it can, know the label that you give and it can also give like a general text such as this is an illustration, this is a face, this is a woman, which is very nice what I say. And from Google Cloud Auto Machine Learning, since it's, it's still in beta, the UI is not that sophisticated, it only shows the label. And this is how it looks in the website that I built. And this is how it looks in Azure Custom Vision, which is, yeah, wrong prediction, I don't understand. Microsoft starts. So, okay, let's go back to when should we use uh, platform as a service for image recognition? Uh, so basically, such as me, since I'm the beginner in deep learning and stuff, I probably will on use like these kinds of services for uh, things that I don't want to invest too much time for it. And I don't really understand what, what how it works behind, right? So I probably don't want to spend much of my time on it. But the problem here is probably you need to spend a lot of money because it's more expensive than building your own model, of course. And of course, at the end of the day, it's, I recommend you to compare what you built by yourself and these services, they might have better performance than you or the other way around. Your, your model might have better performance than them. So what to compare actually between these services? Uh, each services have their own capabilities, such as some services are good in detecting multi-objects, some services are good in detecting the one that we already cleaned up uh, for a single object, and the others give you like multiple tags. Some give you more specific tags, such as this is a Toyota, like a brand name. The other only give you a general tag, such as this is a car. And sometimes you might want to consider whether you need the top one accuracy or it's okay to with top five accuracy. And the last one is of course the cost about the money. So the some problems that I talked before. So what you need to consider in image recognition is you need to think about the noise in the image about the rotation, for example, for the face expressions. And for this project itself with anime characters, the problem because it's too flexible, like illustrate, illustrators, they can just draw the characters by how they like, right? And some characters, even though they have the same name, they might have a multiple forms, like they can hand scene and become like changed into the second <laughs> form, third form, 
So yeah, for example, if you know like Fred Series Saber, does anyone know here? Saber has a lot of forms, so you need to think how to solve those kinds of classifications. And there's also an interesting paper if you are interested. In there's a title paper that tries to describe how you can fool a neural network easily. For a human being, both uh, photos looks like a teapot, but when you add some noises to the image, they just give a random like biology, which is doesn't make sense for a teapot. So, yeah, as the PyCon Hong Kong like mission can learn, so basically try to generalize the idea and solve your own problems with machine learnings. And if you are interested in checking this project out, I put all of my projects in my GitHub account. And the presentation slide is also available in my website. Yeah, so you can check it here. Uh, uh, this project has like, uh, I separated it, it into two repositories. You can see the transfer learning anime at the top and the more info there for the website. Okay, a bit of self-promotion, because my company already paid me to come here, so if you are interested <laughs> in working in Japan, please try to go to our website and apply for our global internship program. It's, it's also an on onboarding platform for full-timers, and the interesting part here is you want to join these kinds of conferences. If you get your CFP accepted in all conferences around the world, our company will handle the cost for you, which is very nice. And so far, we already have like more than 60 people joining from around the world. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So do you have any questions to our speaker? I have a very simple uh, question. Have you considered, because we talk about you don't have enough data for this project, right? Yes. Have you considered using the animation? Because in the animation, you have so many uh, kind of Brand that you can get. Okay, so that's the interesting part. Actually, for those kinds of things, if you know, uh, there's something called uh, what anime. Dot G A thing. Uh, so the problem, if you want to use uh, ah, sorry, if you want to use from the anime itself, usually they have the same style, right? The same style of image. You want to try to make more variations in your data set because you don't want them to come from the same source, from the same like creator. So you want to try to di diversify your data set. That's why after I got a lot of data from a lot of illustrators, I try to diversify it by uh, like distorting the image, doing some hyperparameters such as like uh, resize it first before crop it, or you can try to distort the image before crop it and do a lot of other things. Any other questions? So just now you you demonstrate how to um, recognize the um, character card uh, in physic in physically, right? Yes. In terms of com uh, computer monitor. So I wonder whether it will work if you rotate the card or sometimes even change the perspective of the card. Would, would that still be able to recognize the, um, the face or is there any technique we can correct that? Yeah, actually, that's why uh, of in my model, it doesn't handle those kinds. In the model I created, it doesn't handle those kinds of problems that much. But for example, in human face, actually, after you try to detect the face, uh, you don't just uh, run it through the classifier bracket. You need to readjust the image to a certain position, such as this features position, before you can know whether this face is actually from this guy. Because it has a lot of problems. For example, if you took a photo, it might be distorted, right? Like each camera have different quality, and of course with car and with anime characters, you also need to handle these kinds of things. Yeah, there are a lot of resources on like doing things, how to fix things with the rotation or distortion and stuff, or noises, for example. And some people just uh, making stuff, like trying to break the model, like, okay, like the people problem that I explained just now. So yeah. It's a very interesting field that you can do more and more in the future. Thanks for the presentation. Um, I have a uh, 
think of any user case for your project, for example, um, one thing I would be thinking of like, and can use this in some like cost pays competition. <laughs> so <laughs> if the model can recognize that a uh, human like cost pay those characters, then we may have a waiting and then let's say um the, the competition and adjust that. No, 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 this is uh, okay. This project is only for fun because at some point, <laughs> okay, my friend keep asking me like, which character is this characters come from, right? I don't really want to explain everything else, so I just like sometimes okay, just use this thing and you can know this character comes from this anime, and you can just search the anime by yourself, such as something like that. But of course, if you are interested, you can extend it to detail like cosplayers and stuff, and do more fancier stuff with it. I would actually like, like to know if it actually recognizes the acute uh, type uh, drawings that you, for example, that you put in the cover in, in the very first page of your slides. Can you can, can your model also handle those kind of cute cute drawings? Ah, uh, you mean the art style? Yeah, yeah that, that, that's that's one of the problem actually because sometimes the art is so different compared to the normal uh, illustration, right? So you, it's so, one of the challenges actually. So. It depends. I don't know whether it's a black box, so I don't know whether currently it can detect this or not. But sometimes it can, sometimes it cannot. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any other questions on the floor? Uh, just a simple question. I just uh, want to know uh, how far your model can recognize uh, the same character with a different uh, extra, very exaggerated facial, uh, facial expression. And also, uh, you mentioned about the access problem, the uh, uh, half pace. The half face problem. So, uh, how far your model, model is, is working uh, due to dealing with this problem? Oh, okay. So, yeah, about the half the half face problem things and these things. Uh, I actually haven't really solved it yet. Yeah, I know there are like several techniques to solve it, but I haven't really dig into the paper like reading of all this, the stuff because this is a side project anyway. So I don't really spend that much time into it. And. Yeah, about the distorted visual expression. Of course, because it's a machine learning model, right? It depends on the data set that you prepare in the beginning, whether it also contains those kinds of input. Uh, because uh, when you want to de try to detect those kinds of things, you need to prepare the data set first. Actually, that's the most annoying part. Like, I spent almost one month to prepare the data set with like 10,000 images, try to supervise and categorize this. Uh, image has these characters and these characters belong to this name and stuff. So, yeah, I will say actually the most problems here are in preparing the that the data set. You need to prepare the data set like you need to remove all the noises from the data set. That probably where you will spend the time, the, like most of your time. But fortunately, you can also use like Google data set search right now to help you in doing some of the stuff. It might be very helpful in the future. I haven't really tried it yet by myself, but it looks promising. I got a, I got a question. Well, during your research, uh, how much uh, collision or uh, have you found between the image of uh, characters? Because it somehow indicates the recycling atmosphere of the enemy industry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually an interesting question because some characters ex look exactly the same to the other characters, right? Yeah. So sometimes if you upload the face, then it can give you like the second closest one. Oh, and then you think, oh, right, this character is similar to this character. Or when you try to upload this, you, you probably will see, oh, okay, this character is actually similar to this character. So it's well, also, but I haven't like, really like dig in that much into that things, but yeah, it's actually helped us to know like whether some characters are actually just recycled Especially when the characters come from the same series. Usually it probably will detect, okay, this character has like wrong name, but you can know like this character probably came from the same series. All right. So let us thank our speaker again. Thank you. And our next session will start in five minutes. So.